So a lot has happened since we last sat down in Bahrain, but before we get into that, it is Black History Month, and I think we'll both agree that it shouldn't just be limited to one month. No. But you are listed as a Black History Month hero, so I'd love to get you know, your take on the celebration. Well, first, yeah, that's like the first time I've heard that, and uh, the realization that you are a part of it, can be a part of it, but I think everyone's a part of, uh, a part of it. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's naturally these months, there's these months to celebrate all these different uh, things through through the year, and that's why I like, for example, see, for example, with my helmet, the LGBTQ plus flag mm -hmm. that I have on the top of my helmet, I've just been running it. Even, oh, yeah, yeah, a lot just, of the yeah, year. just running it. It's like there's no reason why it should just be one one, one mm -hmm. month, but it is a great month to. Uh, you know, when I was at school, we never ever celebrated it, and we never ever did any history work on it. it was never acknowledged at school, which was really yeah. frustrating for me. Um, but knowing, you know, my family knew about it, and and getting to being educated at home uh, about certain individuals, um, the struggle, the the empowerment, the movement, mm -hmm. um, some of the some of the amazing accomplishments. Um, that have happened through history, that gave me um, a lot of hope that, firstly, there's a place for someone that looks like us and mm -hmm. um, someone of color, and it was incredibly informative, and that's where I learned about uh, um, Nelson Mandela, yes. and who was, I would say, biggest inspiration. It's so, so important that it's, as, a, as I said, it's not just one month. Mm -hmm. This That's why I'm really trying to work with Mission 44 to try and adjust the curriculum, for example, so that it's more of it's included in everyday history. Mm -hmm. Why not? Absolutely. Um, when you're in England, for example, and you're learning about history in class, it shouldn't be uh, that only white people won the war, which was basically what was uh, talked. talked about. In, mm -hmm. When you find out there are so many different nations that are a part of helping us win the war, and the Windwash generation that are a part of coming, helping coming over, from Caribbean countries and helping rebuild the UK. Those are things that we were never ever, I was never ever told about when I was a kid at school. And so those are things that should be studied at school and acknowledged. And um, so I think, I think the month's good, but it should be implicated, it should be added as for, not only for, for Black History Month, but for, for all the history. Mm -hmm. you know, I know it's hard to cover everything, but they should try. Absolutely. Well, you touched on it there. A lot of it is about learning about the history of black people, but it's also a great opportunity to celebrate the culture, the heritage, some yeah. of the achievements, which you obviously play a huge part in. Uh, but on the topic of heritage and culture, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your heritage and your family history. Um, well, what can I say? Uh, well, that's been something I've been trying to learn more about. Um, growing up, I was I uh, first time I went to Trinidad, uh, my grandma was from Trinidad, mm -hmm. and uh, first time I went was when I was four years old, and I, I would say where I always felt more comfortable was when I'd go, go back to Grenada, where my granddad and my grandma lived, and mm -hmm. um, some of my aunties uh, lived there, some cousins, and there was obviously there was a lot of people that looked like me. I was never ever told to go home to. Yeah. <laughs> country and I never received any uh, experience racism there, for example, or discrimination. Um, and it's not until I've got into my 30s that I've started to try, I was like, I want to go down this road of discovery to try and understand what is, where, where do we get the Hamilton name? Um, where were we originally, originally from? Where did the slaves come over on the ships mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the Caribbean? Because growing up, I would say I'm of Caribbean descent. Yeah. I'm biracial. But turns out that we already knew that, that they would have come from somewhere in Africa, but where exactly? Yeah, exactly. So I'm going through that process now, and I can't like, let too much out of the bat at the moment. But, yeah. um, but what I have discovered is, for example, how the Hamilton, we got the Hamilton name, and there's a slave owner from Scotland, wow. um, Robert Hamilton, who then had a plantation, had about 150 slaves, and um, obviously uh, at some stage then these slaves took on the name of the slave owner. And um, there was another slave owner, which was, uh, second name was Davidson. My granddad ended up 
being called Davison Hamilton, which I have Davison Hamilton in my my surname, so in wow. my in my name. So um, so that's pretty pretty cool, just to kind of know a little bit about that. But then I think the more special part for me is is the Africa, uh, mm -hmm. the part from Africa where my grandma and my granddad and their parents would have originated from. And um, so whilst we whilst we claim and we're grateful to be a part of the Caribbean islands in Grenada, we'll always be Grenadian of Grenadian descent. Going to Africa this this August for me was one of the most, if not the most special experience for me, just to to tap into a little bit of uh, of Africa and experience a few of the different countries. I didn't go to the wealthy parts. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of wealth um, and, and great buildings and businesses, and um, but I wanted to really kind of get to the ra rarest, rawest part of, of some of the parts of Africa and uh, of the countries and and see how people live with very little, which mm -hmm. there are in a lot of places around the world that have that. But that for me was really empowering just to think that my ancestors, my grand, great, 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 great grandparents would have been in one of those tribes. Yeah. And um, it's beautiful. And then when you start then going down the loop of just learning that, like, uh, about the banning of African drums, um, the pyramids, for example, removing the noses. So uh, it's quite, it's quite crazy to think how much was done to kind of hold them back mm -hmm. and so much was taken from Africa uh, that's not really acknowledged and there's still so much that's not so many countries that still haven't apologized yes. for the treatment uh, so much is still stolen from that beautiful place and um, if you yeah um, anyways I don't want to be <laughs> negative but like going down that route and learn yeah. more about that I think then, then gives me a much better understanding of who I am um, where I you know, and what my values are, and what I want, how I want to progress moving forwards, and being in Africa now, I'm now I'm trying to figure out how I can get involved in helping young kids there get into mm -hmm. STEM subjects. What about the Hamilton Commission there? There's many young kids with abilities there that deserve 100%. education that don't have education. Yeah. There. So um, my purpose is kind of expanding. <laughs> now, I wanted to share with you, I mean, you got into it a little bit, I think, you didn't want to share too much, but I had a similar experience to you in that uh, my mom is Rwandan Tutsi. There was obviously a big genocide yeah. in Rwanda, and my dad's side of the family, he's European Jewish, so there's another major genocide there. So for me, it was about trying to trace back where they really came from, mm -hmm. and because my mother was obviously born in the Congo after her parents fled. Yeah. and. I just wanted to make not that I didn't believe my parents, but I just wanted to make sure that I knew like where I came from. Yeah. And so I wanted to ask where the idea of your trip was born, but I, I'm assuming that that's part of your discovery. It is, yeah. And I wanted to ask why you chose the four countries that you chose. Um, in terms of choosing, I mean, there's so many beautiful places to go to. Yeah. Uh, it was more just kind of looking at the map and being like, okay, which, <laughs> where are sense. places I really want to go? Yeah. Uh, I really, uh, I, you know, I love animals, so I really wanted to, like gorillas, oh my God, I really wanted to see, go and see the gorillas. And um, the idea of hiking up through a trail and coming mm -hmm. across gorillas living in their natural habitat, that for me was huge. Also, when we did that, we, I didn't know that the Congo was right over mm -hmm. the hill. Yeah. and the how they all work together actually in um, in their groups to protect the wildlife mm -hmm. and the gorillas in that area. Um, I actually did go to a museum to, to, to understand more about the genocide there, which was only, yeah. like, what, 30 years ago? Yeah, well, there was actually um, two phases to it, but there yeah. was around the 60s sort of already, you know, an yeah. up, a bit of an uproar. For and sure, then, but it was yeah, only in the 90s, yeah. yeah. It's just crazy, crazy to think how far they've yeah. transformed themselves in that time. Yeah. Um, and I think there's still remnants. I think now there's, uh, everyone seems to be living in harmony mm -hmm. there. Uh, I would say Rwanda was probably, was probably my favorite in terms of like, if I felt like I could live there. Mm -hmm. But I could every day wake up. So and, much greenery. It's so yeah, beautiful. wow, so yeah. beautiful. But they were all really, really beautiful. Yeah. So. Um, hard to choose a particular place. 
I think really, and also I was just limited with time. So I was like, okay, I've got to do three or four days in these yeah. ones. And then next year I'm going to plan to go to uh, probably to, to West Africa, probably. Yeah. And um, like Nigeria, Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm dying to go to those places too. So you said some really profound words about your trip, including that it was some of the best days in your entire life and that you're not the same man that you were before the trip. Yeah. Can I ask why it was that moving? Well, a bit like I was uh, touching on before, um, I think it was just really trying to understand a bit of where you, your place in the world, where you, uh, as I said, I think just growing up, it was, I had a lot of tra traumatic kind of experiences with the discrimination that I, even just recently I was, I was visiting my parents and they were like, you never told us about that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then then getting into discussions of why I couldn't tell them, why I didn't feel like I could tell them about it. And so generally felt that I, that I struggled al al alone during that period of time. Even, even though I had a, a father of color, I couldn't, didn't feel like I could speak to him about it either. Because mm -hmm. um, he was a tough Caribbean parent, <laughs> uh, as they are. Um, always expecting so, so highly of me. And so I think going, to, so then just going through that, my life not really kind of, because also when you're biracial, you don't necessarily, f there are different privileges as, as we know, like, and that you don't necessarily fit in fully with, you know, that, that people with darker skin have different privileges and mm -hmm. different, even have it even worse than, yeah. and I was always saying, well, you know, you're mixed race, you're not black. Mm -hmm. And seeing all these kind of different undertones that were, uh, that were continuously kind of suppressing me over time and not knowing how to deal with it or not knowing anything. Um, and again, going through history, not knowing what part of, of history that I'm a part of mm -hmm. or my heritage is a part of. So this is that first, this is the first time that I'm finally seeing some of that from one side, yeah. but also learning a bit about where like my mom's from and, and her heritage, which she has no idea. She yeah. just thinks she's from Birmingham, yeah. you know? And, um, and then just like having these conversations with my parents and now having them like starting to look into their their backgrounds mm -hmm. and now they're interested in you know where their parents come from and how they because ultimately we as human beings we uh, when, when your parents your behavior and traumatic experiences and they all trickle over to your kids and kids kids and and I want to break out of any negative cycle that maybe have passed over to me and be better. I want to take the good bits of my parents, for example, and try to be a better, uh, do it better, even yeah. better than they did it, um, yeah. if possible, one day. So I that's mean, really kind of the goal, um, so that I can also just be a better human being and, mm -hmm. and a better friend and a better son. So I obviously understand a lot of what that feels like. My father is white, my mother is black, yeah. and I always identified as mixed race and I think it's easy to say you're mixed race but at the same time as you said there's colorism yeah. and often I feel like I could never identify as white mm -hmm. but I am given the black experience yeah. which is tough to deal with because I am 50% white, 50% black yeah. and for people who don't have mixed backgrounds I think it's hard to translate what that experience is like. Definitely. Do you ever find yourself subconsciously sort of adapting in certain situations? Um, I don't, I don't feel that I do, no. I think, okay. um, I definitely remember when I was younger, my dad, and even I've noticed when like with friends, like my friend would answer the phone, you know when your friends are done and you like, you have your kind of boys kind of convo, yeah. the way you're speaking, but then having to operate in an organization that was predominantly white, for example, and having to, to speak differently, to mm -hmm. be different. Um, I remember ha um, the kind of the pressures of the, the idea that I had to be different. Like I always talk about, uh, I spoke about it many years ago about like having to be a, feel like I had to be a different shape mm -hmm. or squeeze into a different shape to fit the- Sort of conform to- Yeah, you. yeah. There's like one shape can get into Form one, and if you're not, you know, if you're not that shape, then you, you're not welcome. Get in. And yeah. so you kind of squeeze yourself into being that, just so you can get through. And then when you get in, then you can slowly become yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of what I did. Um, but I was really fortunate. I, I grew up with um, 
you know, my mom, I, like you, I, my mom and my sisters are white. Um, my stepmom, um, Linda, and all her family as well. So, and I grew up going to crew, and and I never was made to feel any different. Mm -hmm. um, I was always, I was really, really grateful to. I was very, very fortunate to be in a loving family. But I would say that they didn't, un they didn't understand. I couldn't ever speak to any of them about the experiences I was having mm -hmm. necessarily because they didn't fully understand it. Yeah. Um, and how could they? You know. Yeah. Um, so now I'm able to have these conversations, for example, with my parents and also trying to ask them to like educate themselves a little bit more, which they would have never have had mm -hmm. education wise, apart from my dad, obviously. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's brought us, close, brought us closer as well. Um, them understanding, for example, what I'm trying to do with Mission 44 and how important it is to me, but also how impactful it can be to others. For sure. And um, so it's been, it's been a good period transitional and uh, I would find my I definitely feel I'm happier than I've ever been which is really strange because I'm not winning in my good <laughs> racing and that's yeah. kind of really been like my my go-to thing like having success there would would bring me so much ha happiness but I'm but finding more happiness in my personal life now exactly. just being more comfortable in who I am and my surroundings and where I'm going and my intentions I mean we all have problems and we all sort of, you know, get stuck in a cycle of, you know, what our own issues are. And mm -hmm. I think having the experiences that you've had and the experiences I've been lucky enough to have growing up in South Africa, yeah. having visited some countries in Africa, to, you know, obviously everything is relative, yeah. but sometimes just having that perspective sort of just helps to put things back into their place. Definitely. And definitely. takes the weight off of your shoulders, for sure. Absolutely. But also, like, we, uh, we, we live in such a bubble like yes. you know there's so much happening around the world and so many people are struggling with so much mm -hmm. like um it's sad to see if you really sit and watch the news because it feels like it's worse than ever um i've i that experience for example going to africa going to seeing people with so little uh you know, i say so little but they would also had everything they were so happy yeah um but i mean just seeing a, a different way of living it shows that we you know we accumulate too much stuff we, all, we eat too much food. Mm -hmm. um, it's where people, the things that we take for granted, people don't have that luxury. And I think it's really great to have that experience and put things into perspective. So I took like my closest friends who would never have had that experience before also, because um, we're all kindred spirits, but we, but we can all grow. We can all be sure. more compassionate, more have more empathy. And I think everyone grew a lot through that experience. We, we had times where we all got to like, we had some really amazing experiences, as, you know, as guys, you don't always talk about your emotions and stuff, but we had moments like that where we were just like a group of five of us, we were all hugging each other and just grateful for our relationships and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was a really transitional uh, journey that we all went from for, and I'm, you know, I can't wait to take my family again. So to add to what you've said about the trip, you also said that it was a life-changing reset and that it recentered you and it truly, truly brought you peace. Yeah. So. I kind of want to understand where you were at going into it and you know what was the moment if there was a moment where you felt that change um i would say that i definitely have had i mean i i made the decision in january that i was uh, i was going to take on that kind of discovery um and it was just really about uh, after new years i was discussing i was thinking of how i want to live more intentionally and with more intention and plan ahead which I never ever do mm -hmm. it's kind of everything spare the moment and most often when it was like that uh, you don't always optimize the time you don't you're not always where you really want to be mm -hmm. and so trying to find the best balance in life uh, then obviously I've come from a quite a difficult time at the end of last year and recovering from that refocusing into a season um, and then having something to look forward to because I planned it so far in advance. Yeah. Um, and, and then I think just impl implementing things in my life, for example, I like to try to meditate. I'm constantly looking for balance, not overworking. I'm a workaholic, uh, but not overworking so that you're always tired, but also trying to find the time with family, mm -hmm. uh, find the time for happiness, mm -hmm. putting the good people around you that have got good energy, doing things that bring you joy um, and you know and it takes time to maneuver all these different things 
uh, in one person's life, right? And it's, you're never going to always have it perfect. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You're constantly, mm -hmm. constantly adjusting it. And um, I think for me there, there was, that was just when I was most at peace. Um, the motherland has, a, there is a special energy there. Mm -hmm. It is like the center of the earth, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I could feel that, those vibrations there. And it was also the music. It was the smiles of the people. It was the, because uh, you know, we're all made of energy. So it's just the way people shared their energy. Yeah. I saw so many things that I was like, I hadn't, I just hadn't seen, I didn't know that I was gonna experience those things. Yeah. And it's also the animals, you know, yeah. oh, geez, there's so many animals and I love animals. I'd be working out in the gym and I'd, there'd be a zebra right in front of <laughs> like the window, you know, and I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was walking from, I like, can walking from the gym and there was literally elephants like 50 meters away and um, mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, I feel so, spoiled having grown up in South Africa yeah, to experience so that. But that's the same lot. in any scenario, right? Yeah. Like if you grow up in California, you, you see sun every day, yeah? so you're used to, but if you grow up in England, you see the gray a lot, and yeah. um, when it's a sunny day, you appreciate it a lot, yeah, you know? That's true. But if you're so used to something, and so that's why I'm trying to break out of patterns that, that I've grown up with, um, things that I'm constantly doing, the things that that I don't like and I want to break those patterns, but it's not easy to break patterns, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this was, I would say the start, one step in trying to also do that. Thank you so much for being so open and honest. Okay. You know, there's a little bit in there that you're still keeping for yourself, but we'll get it eventually. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for being so vulnerable and open. Thank you, appreciate that. <laughs>